Good morning, church. Wasn't that awesome to just bask in worship? You know, I can see something that you all can't see. I was sitting here and I was... Just watching those that were here, thinking about those who could not. And I watched my wife just walk around this house with her arms lifted high, worshiping. And it's such a precious sight. We have so many of us that are on the front lines, and I see my wife leave our house as a nurse every day, going out in a time where people are getting very weary. You know, there's a word that's been introduced, actually two of them, in the past three to four months. For years, the big C word was cancer. Now we have a couple more words added to it. We got corona. We got COVID. But oh, I want to talk to you about some other bigger C words than that this morning. Just to remind you, starting out, how about the word, the big C word, creator? The creator of heavens and earth. Genesis 1 says, and the spirit of the Lord hovered over the earth and it was formed without void, dark. And he spoke and there was light. He created light. Then we jump down to verse 26. And they said, let us make man. Let us create man in our own image. And he created man. He set him in the garden. Creator. Creation. Two very, very powerful C words. The third one I'm going to talk about is the word covenant. We serve a God of covenant. He made a covenant with Abraham. We're going to talk about that a little bit. But then, the most powerful one that we recognize, and that's the word Christ. If you look behind me, you'll see a cross. The cross reminds me of then the crucifixion and all what happened on that day. We celebrated it last week, did we not? The powerful crucifixion. And because of that C word, and those combination of C words, we do not need to fear the other three words that I first mentioned to you. Because there's such authority and power in the cross of Jesus Christ with his shed blood. Amen? I want to start with you with a scripture from Psalm 105, verse 8 in the King James. It says, He hath remembered his covenant forever, comma, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. I want to just read that to you in the message a little bit further. Verse 1, excuse me, verse 7, picking up. He's God, our God, in charge of the whole earth. And he remembers, he remembers his covenant for a thousand generations. He's been as good as his word. And we know his word. He sent his word. His word became flesh and dwelt amongst men and is with us. It's the covenant he made with Abraham. The same oath he swore with Isaac to Isaac. The very statute he established with Jacob. The eternal covenant with Israel. Namely, I give you the land. Canaan is your hill country inheritance. When they didn't count for much. A mere handful and strangers at that. Drifting pillar to post. He permitted no one to abuse them. See, this is the advantage of a covenant. He told kings to keep their hands off. Don't you dare lay a hand on my anointed. Don't hurt a hair on the heads of my prophets. It's powerful, the covenant that we had. The powerful, the covenant that we walk in every day. We take with us. You know, there's a lot of talk. If you watch too much media, it can be overwhelming. you got to just shut the thing off. I, I get some quotes that are, I get online that spiritual, godly quotes. Uh, this is one that was from Friday. It says this. This is not scripture. It's just a quote. Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Small minds discuss people. What are you thinking about? God gives us witty ideas and adventures. 
and we spend time in his presence with his word, he speaks to us. We need to see that God has always used people all throughout history, talking of prophets, to speak to us, to call the future, the prophetic voice, the revelation that comes through the prophetic voice. But that requires something, doesn't it? It calls, requires separation. <laughs> separation. Think about that. Set apart. Are you set apart right now? Or are you just locked down in your home? How do you see yourself this morning? Do you see yourself set apart? Do you see yourself separated as unto the Lord? Or do you just see yourself imprisoned in your own home? Just a challenge for you to think about this morning as we go forward. We are set apart. You see, when we are set apart and we see things, we start to see things with eternity in mind. Thinking like he thinks. When he rebuked Peter that day, and he said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, for you're not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Where are our heads at? We're going to talk a little about that this morning. Seeing present future as revelation. You begin to walk in this, the fullness of God. In this time, I said we have three things. We have Almighty God, the El Shaddai, created of the heavens and earth. We have his covenant, the second thing. And the third thing is we have contradiction. Contradiction, what does that mean? Anything that lines up against God's covenant. We're in that time right now, people. We're in a time of contradiction right now. That's what we're faced with. Contradiction can bring weariness. I want to talk a little bit about that. We're at that place. I don't want you to be in denial of it. I don't want you to pretend that it's not there because it's there and it's very real. But what does he say? In Galatians 16, 9. And let's not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. These are promises of God, people. That's how powerful our covenant it was him. John 16, 33 says this. I have told you these things so that in you, in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but I, I, Jesus saying, I have overcome the world. He's already paved the way for us to be victorious. So we need to take hold and guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus more in this hour now than we ever, ever, ever have. I believe that there are structures that are trying to weary us in this hour. I'm going to call them structures. You may call them strongholds. You may call them thought processes. You see, right now listening to me, you'll say, oh, Pastor Steve, I'm fine. Listening to you. Okay, well, what about tonight when you go to bed about 2 o'clock in the morning when you have to get up and get rid of a glass of water, go, try to go back to sleep, and those thoughts start to come through your head of weariness. When is this going to end? When am I going to be able to go back to work? When am I going to be able to leave my house? When am I going to be able to collect a paycheck? You see, there's things that we need to understand. I have thought about this on the way over here this morning. If the Bible was taken away from me at this time, I would be very sad. I would cry. I would be very, very sad. But I, I was thinking on the way over here, I have probably, and I'm not bragging, but it's just because I know who I am in Christ and what the history that I have with my God, I have committed probably hundreds of scriptures to memory with inside me that I keep. And so when I get up and go to the bathroom and lay back down at night, what I, do I do? I just start to roll those scriptures. I pull them up and I just start to speak them out loud because there's power in the word of God. There's such strength in the word of God. His love is unfailing. God will not be moved. He says, if, if God is for you, who could be against you? That's his promise to us. We battle not against flesh and blood, Ephesians 6, 12 says. 
but against powers and principalities, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But again, let's combat that with another scripture. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, it tells us to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You know you have the power to control your thought life? You have the ability to stop it dead in its track and say, I'm not buying that lie. I'm not going down that road. Every day you'll have a why you can come to and you choose the path in which you walk. I learned a long time ago, one of my favorite Bible teachers was a man by the Derek, Derek Prince. And one of his quotes, he said, he said, listen, people, depression is a luxury that I cannot afford. If you go into a depressed state, it's going to cost you something. I don't want to have a pity party. I've got too much to do. I tell people I've been saying this for weeks now. These are the best and the worst of times. Why? They're the worst because I hate to see anybody suffer. But for us as the God's people, it's time for, it's an opportunity for us to shine as light in darkness. And there's darkness out there. Dear Jesus, there's darkness out there. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to work that out. How do you walk? How do you see it? A scripture in 1 John 3, 8. Any man, anyone who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. And then it goes on to say, for this reason... The Son of Man came that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, I, I used to have a problem with that scripture. I'm saying, why does it say might? No matter what translation you look it up, and it, it says it might. Well, there's a simple reason for that, folks, and here it is. We have to do something on our part, and that's to be properly aligned with God. See, if we align ourselves with his way of thinking, and not ours, then the might turns into will. And you will see things destroyed. You will see strongholds moved. You will see Mark 11, 22, 23 come into fruition when he says, if you say unto that mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and doubt not in your heart, but believe, then it shall be done for you. That's the alignment I'm talking about. It's so powerful. We need to grasp hold of this in this hour now, more so than ever, ever, because we need to realize and walk with an authority to know that God's word is true and alive and active if we are aligned with him, if we are set apart for him, if we are separated with him, if we are following after him, and you can't do that. By watching CNN. You just can't. It doesn't work. So be careful of your mindset. I'm going to talk about another word right now. It's a word that's come up in the last month or two. And that's the word defer. Now, I think that those of us who have large mortgage payments or student loans, the government has locked the interest rate and has allowed us to defer our mortgages for a few months to help us out with cash flow, I think that's a great thing. But here's the warning I have for you. Don't let that word defer come in too deep. Because you know who else is a defer? Satan's a defer. He wants to defer your vision. He wants you to defer your hope. Remember that. I caution you that I say that prophetically this morning to some of you out there. Be careful about this deferment that you don't get too comfortable where you're at in your homes. Because the day is coming and coming very soon where we got to plug back in and press on, push through. You see, <clears throat> there's a scripture <clears throat> that says, hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. I personally believe that most sickness is the result of of being aligned with hope deferred. I believe that to be so. 
And if you think about it and study it out, you'll see that as well. What are you thinking about? Be careful. Is this making sense to you? You know, there's, I have a litany of scriptures that I want to share with you this morning. A lot of them. The word I, I'm preaching was, that was pretty much the, the, the bulk of the text of it. But we need to know, and I want to just reinforce in your hearts today, you, if you have, a, if you have a, a notepad and a pen to write these down, otherwise I just encourage you, we will be putting this up on our website. You can go back and study it again and write some of these scriptures down. But there's, there's scriptures that we just need to learn to commit to memory. And I'm going to start by reading with Psalm from 42. I'm going to read this to you from the NASB, starting in verse 1. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants after you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. Listen, I've talked to people even this very week. A gentleman friend of mine, a customer who's in ICU, just came off the respirator, fighting for his life. People are talking differently than they've ever talked. For some people, their tears have been their food day and night. I say that, that's why I say. Why will they say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember, and I will pour up my soul within me. For I used to go along with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God. With the voice of joy and thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him. For the help of his presence. O my God, my soul is in despair within me. Therefore, listen to this. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan, the peaks of Hermon, and the Mount of Azar. I want you to just stop for a moment there and think. It's so important for us to remember in our history with God the things that he's brought us through. We all have a history. And I encourage you, if you don't have a history with God, then today will be a great day for you to start to make one. It would be a great day for you to start to make one and develop a history with him. You know... That scripture that says, I'll never leave you, forsake you. I look at my wife out there sitting in the congregation, our small congregation right now, of a handful of people. The day I married her, we pretty much said to each other, I'll never leave you, forsake you. I don't have to worry about that because of the covenant that's established in our marriage. It's the same way with God and the history I have with him. When he tells me, son, I'll never leave you, forsake you. I'm not going to leave you in your foxhole. I've got your back, I've got your front, I've got you enveloped on every side. You see, it's our history with him that makes us who we are. It's our history with him that we can trust. Let me continue. Deep calls unto deep at the sound of your waterfalls. All your breakers and all your waves have rolled over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and his song will be in me in the night. A prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God, My rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As a shattering of my bones, my adversaries revile against me. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. There's just so many scriptures that I can share with you this morning. I'm just going to start reading some of them to you, just to encourage your hearts. If you want to jot them down, I'll give the references. The first one is this, Jeremiah 29, 11. It should be a very familiar one to all of us. For I know, one translation says, for I know the plans. I'm going to read the ones of thoughts, because we're talking about a thought life here. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and to give you a hope. We need to have hope in God. 
Why? Because he's living, alive, and well God. And he is my life spring. He is my wellspring. I'm sorry, but I can't count on Governor Cuomo for my life. No offense, Governor. My life comes from God. My source comes from God and him alone. Psalm 42, 11. Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him. My salvation and my God. Isaiah 40, 31. But they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. He will keep you. You're going out and you're coming in from this time first, forth, and forevermore. Psalm 121, 7 and 8. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. These are his promises for us. This is the very life source of what we, this is my food and my drink every day. If I had to live and die on what the media told me, I would have jumped a long time ago. Just saying, just being real with you. Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the insurance of things, assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Everybody says, well, show me and I'll believe it. Jesus says this, no, believe and you shall see. Did he not say that to Mary? Just before he crawled out Lazarus? Lazarus, come forth! He said, Mary, if you only believe, you shall see the goodness and the glory of God. We need to see. And hope, Romans 5, 5, does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into us, into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Come to me, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 29. Come to me, Jesus is saying, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Can you imagine that? Lying down in your pillow at night and getting true rest, not having to worry about all the caca that's going on out there with the other two C's that are now introduced. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Isn't that powerful? These are just, I have literally, I'm not probably going to read them all, but I'm going to read a few of them, because I just want us to get a picture. I want us to get a snapshot. I want you to get a glimpse of how powerful it can be if we just come to a place as the people of God to allow his word to permeate us. You're locked in home, alone. If you don't have a Bible, go to your laptop. It's a free app, Bible Gateway. Pull it up. I've been telling you this for weeks. There's 176 different translations. Read them. Study them. Not only that, but we rejoice in sufferings, knowing that sufferings produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. That's Romans 5, 3, and 4. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word, O Lord. Psalm 119, 14. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. Hebrews 10, 23. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Psalm 31, 34. I pray that these scriptures are like arsenal. They're like, they're like bullets in your spiritual guns this morning. See yourself packing. I'm carrying the heat, baby. I got them on my sides. I don't leave the house without them. You see a police officer with a gun. Who gives him the authority? The gun or the badge that he wears knowing who he is? It's not the gun. We have to know who we are in this hour when we look in the mirror to have that authority. 
But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Romans 8.25 But as for me, I will look to the Lord and wait for the God of my salvation. And my God, he will hear me. Micah 7.7 7. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will wait in him. Lamentations 3.24 You know, there is a scripture that I studied when I was a young man growing up on a farm. And it comes from Habakkuk 3, 17 and 19. I'm going to read it. And for a lot of us, this is true right now. But it talks about keeping our hope. Though the fig tree does not blossom, there's no fruit on the vine. Though the product of the olives fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there are no cattle in the stalls, Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the victorious God of my salvation. In other words, if it was all stripped from you today, where would your hope be? The Lord God is my strength, my personal bravery, and my invincible army. He makes my feet like hind's feet and will make me to walk, not to stand still in terror, but to walk and to make spiritual progress upon my high places of trouble, suffering, and responsibility. That's a great scripture. That's Habakkuk 3, 17 and 19. There are just so many amazing scriptures in the word of God. To, I want to encourage you. Then he said to him in Mark 2, 27, this is Jesus speaking. He said to them, listen, guys, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. What does Sabbath mean? It means rest. We need to be in a place of rest right now, like we've never been. As, we're, as Ryan was talking about in worship today, as we're set apart, as we're separated in our home, we should be coming into a new definition of what rest really is. Rest is not worry. They don't go in the same sentence. It doesn't work. It's like putting fear and faith on the same plate. You can't eat them both. They're going to make you sick and puke. You either eat of faith or you eat of fear. I choose faith. I choose faith. Then, because so many people were coming to him and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, and he said to them, this is Jesus again in Mark 6, 31, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. I mean, it doesn't get any clearer than that. Exodus 33, Old Testament, here we are. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Oh, Psalm 62. There's just so much in Psalms. David was a man I can't wait to sit and talk to one day. He had such a deep relationship with God. For God alone, for God alone, my soul waits in silence, for from him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my defense and my fortress. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you set upon a man that you may slay him, all of you, like a leaning wall, like a tottering fence? They only consult to cast him down from his height to dishonor him. They delight in lies. There's a lot of lies flying around right now. I'll just stop there. They bless with their mouths, but they curse inwardly. Calmly think of these things, he says. My soul, wait only upon God and silently submit to him. For my hope and my expectation are from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense and my fortress. I shall not be moved. With God, my soul, with God rests my salvation and my glory. He is my rock and of unyielding strength and impenetrable hardness. And my refuge is in God. Trust in, lean on, rely on, have confidence in him at all times. You people, pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us, a fortress and a high tower. Then it says, Selah, pause and calmly think of all that. That's what we need to do. We just need to take a passage of scripture, read it, 
close your eyes. You're at home alone right now. Shut up everything and please, for heaven's sakes, shut up CNN. Proverbs 3.24 says this, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Imagine that. You don't have to drink a half a bottle of vodka to have it happen. Just get into the word of God. Let him fill your heart. Psalm 4.8, in peace I will lay down and sleep, for you alone make me dwell in safety. Psalm 3, 5, I will lie down and sleep. I will wake again because the Lord sustains me. He sustains me. This is Pastor Tom's, one of his favorites, and I've taken it to be mine. 3 John 2, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. 1 Corinthians 15, 19, if the only benefit of our hope is Christ is limited to this life on earth, then we deserve to be pitied more than all others. Think about that one. Let me read it again. If the only benefit of our hope in Christ is limited to this life on earth, then we deserve to be pitied more than all others. He's our solid rock. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Blessed be the God of our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter 1, 3. For no other foundation can anyone day lay other than that which is laid, and that which is of Jesus Christ? 1 Corinthians 3.11. I really hope that these hope, that these are ministering to you a little bit this morning. You know, there's times when you just need to sit around and read the word to God together as a family. It's still the most popular book in the whole wide world. Why are we not picking that up and reading it? But in your hearts, honor Christ, the Lord is holy. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. 1 Peter 3.15 There is only one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. Ephesians 4.4 4. To them chose to them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches and the glory of this mystery which is in Christ in you the hope of glory Colossians 1 27 in vain you rise up early and stay up late toiling for food to eat for he grants sleep to those he loves Psalm 127 2 you know, I could just, I have pages, and I mean, I have pages and pages and pages that I could just continually read, but I think you get my drift this morning. You get my drift. I just wanted to give you some of his word, impart that to you as food, allow you to see it as a living reality in this hour, because that's what we need to see. We need to be, de be able to differentiate between reality, which we see with the, na the naked eye, and reality that we see through the things of God by His Spirit. Jesus said this, John 6, 63, The flesh profits nothing, but my words, they are spirit and they are life. So that which we see by the flesh in this hour profits nothing. Think about that. Take inventory. I've been saying it every week. It's time to reset. It's time to come back in. It's time to press through. It's time to repent, to 
do our hearts in the right place, to be properly aligned in this hour for what he is saying. Seven times in, the, in Revelation, it's either three or four, it says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Come on, people of God. When, we, we, when will we wake up and see? See what he has for us. See what he holds for us in this hour. See what he's called us to. Is our mere existence on this earth to put another car in your driveway and a white picket fence around your house? I don't think so. I have never seen anybody take a trailer load of money behind a hearse to the graveyard. The same way you come in naked, the same way you go out naked. What's the important thing? Our hearts before God. Our hearts before Him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time we've had together this morning in each other's living rooms. Worshiping you, singing your praises, and hearing of your word, which is an absolute. We know that your word needs to be absolute in our lives. We need to say that I absolutely believe that there is a God, that he is for me and not against me, that he loves me, that he's got my back. No matter what I walk through, no matter what I face each and every day, he is there. He will never leave me or forsake me because that's just his nature. And I have that history and knowing because I walk with him every day that he will not forsake me that he will always be by my side, no matter what I face. Thank you, Jesus, for the reality of who you are in this hour to your people. And I just ask you people, after this is over, take a few minutes and do business with God. Say, Lord, I'm not sure what this guy is saying. I just turned on this channel, and there he is. You had me listening to him. I don't know why but I'm just going to do it. If you're real, show yourself real to me today. I receive you into my heart. I accept you as my personal Savior. I turn, I repent from the way I was walking, and I want to walk right with you because you hold my life in your hands. When people are faced with death, let me tell you, they're scared. I've talked to people, I'll tell you in the ICU, they are scared to death. One gentleman said when they were loading in the ambulance, he said this to me. He said, I didn't think I'd ever see my house again. Now, a week later, they took him off the respirator and he's going to be able to see his house again. Do you think perhaps people like that are taking inventory of their lives? I think so. And there's nothing wrong with that. We all need to do that. That's really all I want to say to you. I just want to bless you. Father, I just release your blessing over every man, woman, and child at the sound of my voice, wherever they're sitting right now. Father, bless them as they go forth. Strengthen them. Let them in taste of your presence. The word of God says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I pray this week that you may have a taste of his goodness to truly see how good he is. God bless you and have a wonderful day.